Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on a Sunday, broadcasting live from beautiful Los Angeles, California. And my name is Vanka Tapia. I'm an actor slash producer, and I'm the founder of Actor Slash. And wherever you are seeing us, because I see already that this video has been shared 17 times, make sure you go back to Actor Slash, where we can read your questions or any comments that you have to my two super amazing, superstar, awesome superhero guests. And I'm gonna start introducing them one by one and they will be showing themselves in a moment. But this is just awesome. I'm beyond excited because as an actor and as a voiceover talent, I'm always trying to find different ways to improve myself as a performer. I'm trying to get more tools that can help me and my agents to move me and to show me out there. And the most you prepare yourself and the most you, you train and, and, and you just learn as many skills as possible, it's better for anyone. And uh, not too very long ago, I mean, actually this mo motion capture has been out there for the longest time, but it hasn't had the credit that should. That's my opinion. And now knowing these two fantastic people that we just saw their reels, it's been like a great opportunity to every single person who's joining tonight because you will learn from the masters. And I'm going to start introducing, oh my God, at this great, amazing seven-time international martial arts Hall of Fame recipient. He has experience teaching over 30 years He's an actor, he's slash a producer, he's slash voiceover talent. And of course, through his academy, the Mindsight Tribe, he has teached and helped and guided so many, so many actors, stunts, performers, monsters, uh, ninjas, anyone who want to join. And you probably know him as Predator, as Godzilla, as... Gosh, you've seen him in Avatar, in, in, in different Deadpool. And I want you guys to, I only have Justin behind the scenes who's going to help me clap and welcome him. So from wherever you are, please share the love, thumbs up, like this video, and help me welcome TJ Storm. And there he is, TJ. Hola. Hi, how are you? Hey. TJ, thank, thank you for you. having me. This is awesome. It's awesome. It's so fantastic. I'm very excited. And I'm very happy that you're here. So now we will be two people clapping to, to the next person. She's an action actor, creature performer, and certified personal trainer special, specializing in, in mobility training. I really need to go back and do this. Uh, she runs the weekly conditioning class, Creature Fit, that focuses on developing the strength, flexibility, mobility, and endurance necessary to, ex uh, to excel at action, acting, and creature performers. She has played soldiers, children, monsters, pets, and even 40-foot uh, lava rankers, aliens, animals in motion captures, and, and on camera as well. She's an actress and a voiceover talent as well. Please welcome Andy Norris. Justin, you can clap. I know we're there. Hi. <laughs> hey. Well, thank you so much, guys, for being here again. I'm excited because I was a little worried about, like, how are we going to be go back to work? How are we going to be joining again the, the industry after this terrible pandemic that we're going through? And I see you guys very active. I see you, like, working still, and this hasn't stopped you. You've been still given performing and also having classes on the park on open areas but first of all i want to know what have you guys been doing how what were you doing or where did the pandemic cut you sure it, it caught us smack dab in the middle of a really busy time because there because performance capture and motion capture and action acting for that matter are are on the rise for everyone. Uh, everybody wants to be a part of this new world and new technology and new way of acting and performing. So we were getting just bogged down with great actors learning to 
learn all the skills they need for performance capture and action acting. And right in the middle of that, boom, the COVID pandemic hit and it changed the world in, in, in a way. So we took the time to step back and reassess how to proceed. And Andy actually was the first one. She got on Zoom and she's like, hey, there's Zoom and we I, I think I can teach classes. And so she's the one who started it. She jumped on and she started uh, teaching our Creature Fit classes. And on like Zoom, said, really? Uh-huh. And she can talk to that. Yeah, it was... um. A bit of a transition to figure out how to teach fitness over Zoom. And I think any fitness instructor or personal trainer can have has probably had a similar experience adjusting to that. But all in all, it was a really positive experience. And, and we got more people, more of our tribe members involved in a time where there was nothing for them to be involved in. There was no community. Everybody was separated from each other. And, you know, two to three times a week, they could jump in and just train with the people that they love hanging out with. And it was sort of a, what's the word I want? It was a bit of an, I don't know what's gonna happen if we try doing this decision, but one that I'm really proud and really glad that we decided to go forward with. Now I see that you guys are also going to parks. Mm -hmm. like an up and air. So you're not longer doing it on Zoom or you do both, you combine? We do both. So I teach, I teach the fitness classes still on Zoom and I also teach them in the park. Gotcha. We, um, all of our performance capture and motion capture classes right now are outside. We've taken all of the safety precautions that the city and the, the county have put in place in order to keep our students safe. We want to provide the opportunities for them to continue to train. Yeah, absolutely. For every class, uh, first, we are outside where it's well aerated. We keep a great distance. Everybody wears masks. Uh, like Andy said, uh, we take all the precautions. We check everybody in with a temperature gun to see if their temperatures are good. And uh, everybody understands uh, what the process is between wearing gloves and the mask. We're able to teach all the performance skills that people want to learn to become an action actor or a performance capture, motion capture artist. Okay, let's talk about that. Explain for the friends who are joining for the first time and they haven't heard about this term. What does motion capture mean? And, and I mean, I know the motion capture and then motion performer. Uh, you want to explain where is this coming from? Like how we started it? Some examples? Sure. Sure, absolutely. So not everybody knows what motion capture is. The short version of the history is 100 years ago, somebody wanted to figure out how to animate more realistically and more efficiently. They wanted to animate the motion of a real person doing the thing. So they created something called a rotoscope and they put the film of a guy who was dancing with a woman and then he drew the outline of both of them and filled it in to make them look like the cartoon so it exactly matched the motion of the humans underneath. That was the first motion capture. Flash forward 75 years and we learned how to do that with computers. Now we put people in very tight suits with markers all over their body and we put them in a room that is surrounded by cameras that have red light pouring out of them. That red light bounces off of those little markers and goes back to the camera and into a computer that translates it into a little model. It looks like a little stick figure. And then with that stick figure, you can basically put any skin you want on it. It can look like a realistic Captain America or Thor, or it can look like a video game version of something in Call of Duty or Spider-Man or Darth Vader or Rancor from Star Wars. It can look like any of those things. And with that technology, we are able to uh, work on uh, films, uh, lots of video games, which is a huge place uh, that requires good acting and good performances, especially voice and especially action actors' motion. Actors that are good at theatrical performance excel in performance capture. And some people will hear me say performance capture and motion capture. Basically, motion capture is the technology. What I just explained is the cameras and the tech the tech and all of that stuff. And performance capture is what actors do in conjunction with that technology. It's all of the skills they bring the motion capture stage. And we teach all of the skills that you would normally use in a performance capture setting. So that means between tactical, which means firearms and how to move well with, with guns, swords. We have sword masters to teach you how to master the basics of film fighting with swords. 
and that means all kinds between samurai and Western European and fancy and all of that stuff. We teach you all of that. We teach creature movement, which is a very difficult uh, style of making specialized characters come to life, uh, including monsters or zombies or just very, very special characters. That's a picture of us doing the sword class. Uh, you see how everybody's well protected. They all have their masks. And they all have swords. <laughs> yeah, but, but not always it's like that, right? They have no, no, levels. No. Like here you have sticks. Yeah, that, that, that is level one and the other one was level two. Yes. And this is the Mindside tribe. So if you guys want to be part of the tribe, we'll get the email on the website in a moment. Let's talk to this gentleman on the bottom right to cover his nose. <laughs> Guns. Perfect. That is the tactical class. So you learn how to, for games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, for films like John Wick, you learn how to move properly uh, with a weapon and with the team that is using those kind of weapons because it's not natural. It's not an easy thing to learn. Uh, soldiers and police train that all the time, but for an actor, they may not know how to hold a gun. They may not know the etiquette of walking on a stage and uh, they could lose an audition if they don't have the basic skills that come along with being able to use a weapon properly. Because if you're saying that you're the special forces guy, or you're saying that you're a police officer and you don't know how to hold a weapon like a police officer or like uh, uh, somebody who's trained in the Marines or the army or the special forces, our tactical advisor teaches you how to do all of those things and not to mess up before you even get the job. Exactly. I've, I've heard about terrible accidents that give them a gun and they end up bringing the gun like this, just like, oh, this it, is so cool and it's so dangerous. It is, this the, is the kind of yes. things that you will learn with you guys, right? Yes, absolutely. And also, it's very physical. It it could it could be twenty minutes, or it could be a job for all day. So you really need to not only like acting that you need to do it every day through castings or through readings or through whatever, but also this is like training. And this is Andy is also great for that. Have that resistance. I don't know if you guys had a chance to watch it from whoever is watching. We already have a lot of people. Uh, asking questions and all that we're going to address them in a moment and let's just talk from uh, here with them it's it's super important that if, if you didn't catch this from the beginning i when we're done i invite you to watch this again uh, we open with their reels and they're fantastic and andy you're an amazing i mean you're like a chameleon and you move like so easily <laughs> how many times do you guys train per day Oh, goodness. Uh, well, I mean, training every day, and it varies based on my schedule. I would say I put in probably a minimum of an hour in training, and sometimes that's focused on flexibility because it's essential for the creature work. And sometimes I focus on mobility. Sometimes I just focus on strength. So it really varies day to day. And how about you, TJ? Because, I mean, you are a martial art Joel. And then you, how many how many hours you've been doing this for so long? How did you start in this in the first place? Um, did you start doing martial arts first and then you join into the, got it. Yeah, when I was a little kid, my mom put me into karate and I was in karate for a long time. And then I went to Shaolin, Taekwondo. I studied lots of different arts and, uh, and I just kept on doing it until I got here and I started working on kickboxing movies and I did a lot of those. I was also a dancer. And so... There was a time in my life for about 10 years that I literally trained for eight hours a day, six days a week. But that said, uh, I eventually got into other things like motion capture and, and other films and stuff like that. And I couldn't commit that much time to train anymore because now I was working. And a very, and most people don't think about this, but, but a very important part of working professionally is recovering. If you don't take time to rest, if you don't take time to recover, you are going to get injured. And uh, most athletes find out the hard way. They need to learn how to rest properly. They need to learn how to recover properly. So uh, that's kind of some of the stuff that we teach in the classes. But yes, that's that's how I train. And I still train, uh, but I have to be more careful because uh, of my work schedule. I have to plan when I'm going to work out so that I have a couple of days to really recover before big jobs come up. So I'm glad you said that you were a dancer because I invited a lot of friends who dance and they're dancers and a lot of friends who who do other activities and they're like, but what does that have to do with me? And I want them to understand that 
Motion capture also covers dancing. Like remember that um, that game that you will that you will do. Um, and there's a lot of video games that require dancing because there are some competitions, and you can bring your dancing skills to these, and they can scan you. And then next thing you know, you are not only a professional dancer doing your shows here and there, but they, you can also be part of a video game. The, I mean, pretty much Absolutely. motion capture can be anything, right? Absolutely. I, I have two answers for that. One, video games do use lots of dancing. Uh, you guys have seen the floss, that little kid dance where you're you're doing this thing and you right. move back and forth. So there are games that have tons. Did you, did you like that? By the way, that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, the there are tons of dances in lots of video games. That's a whole little section that goes from game to game to game. They actually need the dances and they need dancers who can do the dances. But that's not the biggest part of video games. What dancers excel at is telling stories with their body. That's what they do better than everybody else. And they have masterful control of their body. So they are incredible in, in motion capture and performance capture. That said, they also need to be trained the most because we can see the way dancers move. We know they're dancers and that's not a good thing. If you're just supposed to be a businessman or you're supposed to be a sniper and you're beautiful while you're doing it, that's not good. So we have to untrain some of the skills and uh, hyper train the skills that you'll need to look really, really cool doing whatever you do. But dancers tend to learn those things very quickly. So they have zero problem. They are total naturals in performance capture. So if, if you have a skill, anyone who's watching, you have a, a skill that maybe you're into sports, maybe you're into tennis or football or anything, they they will need you. They will use you. So so you can totally should pursue something like this and just have the right guidance. Now, um, I have a lot of voiceover talent friends. Like, for instance, when I, I remember when I was – doing like a, a video game or something in but, but but I took a class for a video game and our professor and some of the the voiceover fellow the fellow voiceover talent who were who were there she says oh you know what someone invited me to do motion capture and this is a very big lady she says I never thought I will be able to do that because I was big and they hire me so they, they do children anyone it doesn't matter as long as you have good resistance and good fit. And then he said something very interesting that sometimes they bring in professional actors who are great performance moving. But when they go into the voiceover, they move and they snap the mic all the time or all the way around. There's actors who are voiceover talents who know they're not supposed to touch the mic. So when they're doing motion capture, they don't move. They don't express themselves. You want to explain the difference between that, like they like because there's a lot of actors. You are a voiceover talent as well, so you kind of have to change the chip, you right? And and like when I'm on a on a booth, I'm just gonna I can move, but I, you have a limit. And when you are in the studio doing motion capture, you can expand and do everything. I think everything you said is really true. Um, we do have a lot of voiceover people come to us to learn how to use their bodies because they haven't trained that. Um, and and they are at first very stiff, but because they're so good at using their voices and filling out an entire character with just their voice, they start to open up with the, with the movement work and they start to develop how to create the entire character. What would be the recommendation that you give to a, a voiceover talent who want to be part of the, the video game world that they dub? Because I was just trying to invite some friends who have done uh, voice in Spanish, some of the characters that TJ do. And I was just like, I'm going to invite them and surprise them. And, <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, we found them. Yeah, like they will do it. But they weren't available. But I just wanted to, they, they, they would have loved it. They were like, oh, my God, I would have loved to meet TJ. And, and they dub you in Spanish or they have done that. How possible is to be considered from a motion uh, performer, mocap mo performer, be offered also the voiceover job. Does that happen often? 
Uh, I would say I mean, it definitely happens. It just, I mean, that just happened to me last month where I was already doing the movement for a character and then they invited me to the come. Time in. Has come. The- <laughs> <laughs> my husband put a cookie monster on my cell phone to remind me that I have to <laughs> eat. <laughs> and it's like that for you. <laughs> Sorry about that. So um, it just happened to you? That's awesome. Okay, yeah, it just happened to me. And it's certainly very frequent that it goes the other way around from from voiceover into motion capture because that has in the past been sort of a standard. So the two are very, very linked, certainly. Because a lot of people think that, oh, no, they're just going to bring famous people, alias the Hollywood people, but it could happen. I mean, but it could happen. That That's awesome. Okay. So tell me how you both end up in Predator because you are a female Predator in, in TJ, you're a Predator himself. How, how was that? Um, well, that was actually, that was a job that TJ brought me on with him for. You uh, see, links. Yeah. It's it's relations. All, it's all definitely <laughs> linked. And largely I was brought on because I had wire work experience and I'm a creature performer. So we started out the day for the first, what, seven hours, TJ? For the first seven hours, he killed me. <laughs> over, over and over again. So all of the, all of the soldiers, all of their deaths, um, that was all done that day. And then toward the end of the day, we moved into some predator movement. So it, I guess the short answer is that that was a job that TJ brought me in for, but then it progressed what we did as we went through the day. So does it happen that through your students, you see someone who learns faster or who has the endurance, the right endurance, someone who you will go and say, probably sometimes they hire you for other jobs and they say, we need new people or something like that, or you need to cover up with someone. And then you guys will suggest some of your students. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, everything, everything in this business is a networking opportunity. Everything's a opportunity to show what your skill sets are. And if you're in class and you just happen to be absolutely amazing at a certain skill set, I'm going to be like, hmm, I'm going to file that away for later because maybe somebody's going to need that. Now, we don't, we're not an agency. We're not like, hey, you should take this. But we've been working in this business a long time and people know that we have worked with all of the people who can do the things, or at least we know a lot of the people who can do the specialized things. And when we know somebody's a good actor, a, a good tactical person, a good sword person, a good creature, or they have a voice and they can really get into into that particular type of character, they, they rise to the top of our minds and we'll be like, oh, we know the perfect people for that. You should talk to these people. They still have to look at them. They still have to decide for themselves, but it helps immensely to have that seal of approval that you get from, oh, I've worked with them before. I know they're good because we pride ourselves on skill, skill, skill. We, and, and that's what separates our school from many schools is that uh, many schools, they want to show you the thing. We're going to show you how to hold a gun once. Look, my dad taught me how to say a little bit of Spanish. I cannot speak Spanish. I don't <laughs> care how hard I try. My Spanish is absolutely horrible. So <laughs> it's not enough to do a thing once. You got to keep training and we right. offer, uh, they're called workouts, but we have workouts for all the skills that we've talked about so that you can come in and practice those skills. And we actually, the, the cool part about that is we get to see you get better. I was just watching the sword class yesterday and all of the people that started in that class, they were beginners. They had beginner level skill. Yesterday was level two and they came back and I was like, Oh, I see that you've advanced. That is really, really nice. Now they look like they could be on Pirates of the Caribbean. They could do some basic sword fights and look very comfortable. But that's just that one skill. All the skills work like that. The more you practice, the better you get. And if you do it with groups of people, those other people are network connections that will get you someday to where you want to go. And something very cool that I notice in your classes is that not only... You get to move, to perform, to do motion capture. You also get to perform and talk. You also, that doesn't mean that you're going to end up doing the voice in the end, but that's exactly the great opportunity that 
people, the directors or anyone who is present, they might suggest that you do the voice and not having it. You learn all these rules. You learn how to start, what to wear, all the lingo. Uh, what was it? About three hour class or five hour? I don't remember. We did. It was a long introduction to motion capture is an eight hour class. That was an eight hours. Yeah, we, we had a break for lunch and we had some breaks for restrooms and things like that. If someone right now, we have a lot of people that I um, invited that they're watching us from Mexico and Colombia and some people from Montreal, from other countries. What will be the classes that they can take online since they are not going to be present, like say on the park or things like that? We're talking about that right now. We're trying to figure out which ones that we can comfortably get the information to people uh, across the video. Because in some of the classes, I want you there in person because I need to see you move. I need to yeah. see the shape of your body. I want to hear your voice expand in the room to see if you can project, stuff like that. But others are more informational. So we think that we can definitely do that online and we're talking about how to do that best. So if there's people that are interested in that, let us know. And I, I think we can probably get introduction to motion capture. But again, it's it's basically how many people are interested on in doing that on a Zoom. And if so, we can make that happen. Can anyone hire you guys one-on-one -on -one or like private classes or something like that? Yeah, to both. I know Andy, yeah, because, right? Oh, yes. Uh, any of our instructors, you can, we, we all offer private sessions in our specialties. How many uh, professors, teachers do you guys have? Instructors? Uh, we got five, six, including me. And I what are the kind of classes? Like you, you were mentioning swords. Um, yeah, we teach swords. We teach firearms, tactical. We teach creature movement. We teach action, stunt fighting. And uh, we teach creature fit, which is the conditioning class that I teach. How do you learn wires? Like, like you're so good. I just saw that landing scene that you did. Oh my God, I was like, that's perfect. Well, wires, um, different. There's, a, there's a couple different places. Well, not since the pandemic. Right now, the places are all closed. But before the pandemic, there were a couple different places that trained wires. And they, they do pretty much specifically wires. That's one of those um, hyper specialties. Right. But I mean, you would recommend to go first through all these things. I would def definitely get your ground movement first. It's yeah, more harder to learn how to move in the air than it is on the ground. Action, the ability to either have action or swords as a base skill before you go to wires is pretty important. That way you have footwork uh, to land off the wires. Absolutely. And we also have something called uh, a pro series, which is a set of classes that are specialized in their thing. So the pro series, uh, we just had a guy named Noel Vega come in and he is uh, one of the stunt coordinators for Call of Duty. Before that, we had Erin Fitzgerald and she is a voice for all these things. She just won an Academy Award with her team uh, for their uh, television voice series, this animation show. And then before that, we had a huge director for video games. So um, we're planning the next ones are uh, a guy who works on all the Star Wars stuff. And after that, we're probably doing a wires class. So we do plan all these pro series as well. Um, so, but those are best in person. Um, we'll probably have a couple of panels on Zoom as well. That's fantastic. That's awesome. And what are you guys working on right now? Like individually, because you're also on camera actors in voiceover talent. So what are you guys personally working on individually? And do you want um I actually just wrapped on a pilot for <laughs> it's it's such a great it's such a great premise. It, it basically follows the wait staff at this bar and the pilot episode. Um, and I'm allowed to talk about it, which is great. Um, the pilot episode happens during SantaCon. So the bar gets bombarded with like, you know, 50 people dressed up as Santa Claus drinking way too much. And their whole premise, it's shot like an old war film, um, is trying to get from one side of the bar to the other with a tray of shots. Uh, so that was a blast. I was doing uh, stunt acting. I was doing action acting on it. So I had a little bit of acting and then being part of a lot of the fights. That's such that a benefit to do your own uh, stunts. That's mm -hmm. also fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's, oh, wow. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm. I'm. I don't know how, but I'm gonna. It's just that I think you're like in the in the valley, right? Yes. 
yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm a little far, but I will figure it out because I really would love to to do it. I just was like, I did it in January. Plus, we've been in contact like for the past year or something like that. And I only had the opportunity to do it in January or less yet, right? Mm -hmm. But but I just follow you and I just, I'm just so thank, thankful and grateful that you have offered so many um facilities to the actor slashers that every single person that I have recommended and taken your classes, they come in like, Van Hey, my gosh, I you just open a new world to me, a new possibility that I didn't even think I had the skill and I turned out to be good and I want more. The and people you said are amazing. They have so much incredible energy. They are absolutely awesome. Oh, thank you so much. So, DJ, going to you, what are you working on right now? Um, As an on-camera or voiceover? A ton of stuff, actually. Uh, the on-camera stuff is very uh, iffy right now. There's a couple of shows working because of COVID, and it's really, really slow. So they're using their core teams to start that work. Uh, on the stages, we're, I'm working on four separate shoots right now, but they're all uh, NDA shoots. They're all super secret. We can't talk about them yet. Um, I am voicing a project, uh, uh, it's called League of Legends. It's a huge video game uh, that uh, I play a character named Lucian and uh, that's really fun. And I'm also voicing two other video games but I can't talk about those quite yet. Uh, and the school is the other thing that we're constantly working on. So we're, we're getting people to their next level and hopefully getting them to their next jobs. And we're seeing tons of our students do incredible things. One of our teachers, actually, the teacher of uh, uh, the action and the stunt fighting, his name is Van Ayasit. He, he just literally 10 minutes ago, he just released the project that he worked on, which is a commercial of Die Hard, which he uh, stunt coordinated alongside uh, Bruce Willis and he got Bruce Willis to do all this crazy driving and all these crazy things in the Die Hard commercial. So it is amazing. If you if you look it up, it's Die Hard Batteries for the Die Hard movie, and they're kind of together, and it is awesome. That is awesome. It sounds awesome. I I'm, I have tons of questions already, but I want you guys, whoever is watching, to take a look at this um, quick quick reel of uh, these amazing guys because it's just fantastic and you will get inspired if I, again if you miss the beginning this is their um, the academy reel their minds eyes tribe and take a look and then we go to questions TJ that what are you doing there um, Andy you guys want to discuss a lot of this I, I have to remove the the audio because I, I might get blocked with the music for it because I don't have the rights, but- No I, problem. It's just a short video of uh, some of the stuff that we normally do in class and you can see some of the instructors. Uh, this is the introduction motion that is uh, intro to firearms and you saw the sword class and you saw the creature class where Andy was turning around as the Rancor. Uh, and uh, that's kind of some of the stuff that we do. Each of the classes are different. Um, the sword class, First, you learn sword basics and sword safety because uh, film, they, a lot of people come to us, especially in action, a lot of people come to us and the first words out of their mouth are, hey, I went to theater school, drama school, and I'm trained in stage combat. And we're like, oh, because yeah. the word stage combat, nobody in film wants to hear those words stage combat. It means something else. It is, it is action for stage, which is a completely different medium and has different protocols. Whereas film stunt people, they do not like the skills that you learn for, for stage and theater. They want to know that you understand their skills and they're very different. So we immediately teach that. Uh, for swords, you learn first basic swords. Then at level two, you start getting into very specific kinds of swords and sword fighting. One day you're a pirate. One day you're a knight uh, from the 18th century. Uh, the next time you might be a Saracen with a scimitar and the next you might be a samurai or a ninja. All are very different swords and very different sword styles. So we show some of that. For the tactical, you first learn basic safety protocol so you don't get kicked off the set. Later, you get to start to understand the difference between a rifle and the John Wick style of 
holding a handgun and then different handguns and then submachine guns and then shotguns. And then there's a bazooka class. They do an entire workout with the bazooka, which they're very proud of. <laughs> it's really cool. You also learn how to breach doors because what that means is that that moment when you kick in the door, there's a very particular way to do it if you're in the Marines versus if you're a Navy SEAL versus if you're a SWAT. So we teach you all the different ways and running the rabbit. It's the way you go around a corner with weapons. Right. These are very specific groups of skills that you start to learn as you level up in the classes. Um, action as well. You learn first how to basically punch and take a punch. Then later you learn how to kick. And then later you start to do all kinds of fancy stuff. And then the creatures. First, you learn how to make simple, basic creature choices or character choices. Then you start to expand the characters and expand the weirdness of the creatures. And how do you move in a weird way that makes you believe that this character is not human? Because the characters that we often do, whether it's for Avatar or for Close Encounters or for Avengers, all of these creatures are very, very different. Some are very heavy. Some are very big. Some are 400 feet tall. They're a little bit different and it, they all have different challenges. So people like Andy, whose specialization is in creature, we, we will help you uh, learn how to do that. And lastly, the fitness requirement for all of these things. There are two large paths for performance capture artists. There's cinematics and there's uh, navigations, in-game or locomotions they're called. Um, cinematics are like doing movies and then navigations are Every movement that exists in a video game has to be caught, but you have to do all of these over and over eight hours a day for sometimes all week, sometimes over several years. You have to squat, you have to jump, you have to run, you have to crawl on your belly, you have to get shot, you have to get shot again, you have to get shot 15 more times. And all of these skills require a pretty strong body because you've got to constantly go back just as fresh as you were the day before. And... Andy's Creature Fit and all of those kind of workouts uh, help you not only stay strong enough and flexible enough and to have the core strength to take these forms, but to not get injured. So I have a question. Um, I'm going to read some questions that people have asked. Thank you so much. Uh, I doesn't say question from Joey in the comments. How do how do we go about getting motion capture jobs? Would it make sense? to rent a studio space, uh, different walks and individual actions. What do you guys think about that? Um, so it's like getting acting jobs. Um, you will usually have to audition. That's the standard way of getting the performance capture job. Um, the audition will usually have you do something called a walk cycle. If you don't know what a walk cycle is, come to introduction to motion capture and you will learn what that means. But Uh, they will have you do walk cycles. They will have you do the scene. They will have you do the scene with the dialect of the character or uh, the, the movement of the creature, whatever the scene is. And then they'll have you do some basic movements. They usually ask for a set of movements. Hide behind this, walk over here, jump on top of that. That is the basics of it. Now there's more to it. That's the kind of stuff that we teach in introduction to motion capture. But That is the basics. You, you, you will have an advantage if you understand all of the basics, if you've taken these classes, or uh, you have an advantage if you're a natural mover, if you're really good at moving, or you're an excellent actor, you have certain advantages. But if you have all of these advantages under one tent, if you possess all of these advantages, then there's a good chance you're going to get the job. But it really helps to have all the information. Uh, we tell you uh, kind of an in introduction to motion capture because it's a long lecture and a long class. We tell you all of the things that are generally expected of a performance capture uh, artist, uh, what movements you can expect, uh, where to be strong, how to best sell the, the performance that you're looking to do, and how can you use your voice in this performance and, and what is the best way to do all that stuff, what to expect. The people that have the most information and are most prepared tend to get the jobs the most. So we try to prepare everybody who comes to us. There's another question from Laura. Are there any classes in Vancouver, Vancouver on the handing of motion capture? I'm sure there are, but now that we know that you guys do it online, that's perfect, some of them, um, in, case, in case you want to recommend anything. 
uh, at the end, soon coming soon actually, because we're already here for 45 minutes, I will we will share with you the website of um, of, of of these guys individually in them in the school as well. There's another question: How many different kinds of firearms do you teach and how to use? And did you know that, or any of the two? Uh, we teach a lot. Um, I mean, we teach your basic rifle, your basic pistol, because a lot of those those skills are transferable depending on the certain type. But in our workouts, as TJ was saying, we frequently change genres. So one day you might be using, we'll learn how to use flint pistols. Um, one day we'll learn revolvers. One day we'll learn sniper rifles. Um, it really, we touch on everything. We've done make up your own sci-fi gun, you know, because that happens on set. And that, I mean, that's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to TJ a number of times where you're given a gun as a character and, and they're like, okay, so, you know, shoot it or reload it. And they may not have thought about how you would reload it, but you get to choose. You get to say, oh, what if I did this? What if I had this thing on my back and I just sort of like flicked it over and it, you know, reloaded the gun. You, so we practice all of that. So in short, all of the guns. Wow. I would and say. we saw already a picture that you first well trained with like, the, of course you are not gonna show up in a park with real guns, but like, you know. No, no we use, uh, <laughs> We use plastic guns. They're all brightly cover colored, and and frequently on the mocap stage, you're using Nerf guns or you're using brightly colored, you know, plastic guns. So it's not uncommon on set to be dealing with that. So and that's what's safest in the park. So when you <laughs> when you go to the park and you get like 15, 20 students, does everybody do you get the attention of everybody? <laughs> do you get people who wants to come and watch and. Yeah, every once in a while we do, but it hasn't been disruptive. Okay. People, they, they realize that we're running a class. You know, they might stop by and ask, like, what is this? Um, but that's usually about it, you know? And this is in a park in, in what is it, in Burbank? Or, like, put, just no, in case Burbank. anyone in Los Angeles want to do it? Yeah, anyone in Los Angeles. It's in the Valley. Uh, in the Valley. Okay, good. There's another question here. For swords, do you teach general swords play or do you delve into different styles? We definitely delve into uh, all the styles. Uh, our sword master is a sword super nerd. Uh, he's a sword maestro, but I think he sleeps with his favorite sword. He is always working with swords. He plays with every kind of sword. He's been studying swords with different sword masters. He's worked with all the sword masters in Los Angeles, and he's been doing it for probably over 30 years. He worked on uh, Zorro. Uh, he worked on Master and Commander. He He's worked on everything. Anything that has a sword in it, he's probably worked on it. And he understands the difference between rapier and dagger, uh, broadsword, uh, katana, ninjato, uh, scimitars, he understands, and he has all of them. He actually brings like 30 swords to every class and he'll be talking and be like, okay, okay, we're all gonna pick up machetes and we're gonna use machete. And we're like, why, why, why a machete? Who uses machete? The Filipinos use it in the 18th century and you're gonna love this. And he just goes completely bananas, which is amazing <laughs> if you are serious about learning how to use swords. So if you want to, if you're serious about your sword game, even if you wanna understand lightsabers, you need to know that there are seven schools of lightsaber fighting and you will learn all seven, seven of them given enough time. But uh, you gotta have the sword basics first. So yes, we cover the sword basics, but it is very beneficial to come to the workouts because over time you will learn all of the different kinds of swords. And we believe me, on, on performance capture sets, I have managed to use all of the different styles of uh, swords uh, that you can even begin to imagine. Between Prince of Persia, which is one style, and uh, the Ghost of Tsushima, which is a different style, and then Star Wars, which is a different style. You need to have all of those styles under your belt if you want to become a serious action actor uh, and do this kind of stuff. Very well. So there's another question. You see, you already getting everybody excited. So Roberto Arison, he wants to know 
when is your next class? We'll tell you. How often do you do these classes? We have classes almost every weekend uh, right now. We'll slow down a little bit over the holidays because of the holidays, but we pretty much have different classes every weekend. And our next intro is no, December 19th. It, I'm almost positive. So it's recommended that, that first they take the intro and then they jump into any other classes. Like yes. if they want to specialize, they, they just want to learn how to do swords or combat or whatever, it's better to do the whole basics. It is that in a perfect world, that's great. If you're like me and you have the attention span of a seven-year-old, you can't wait. So you need <laughs> to, if you want, if you know the swords is coming first and the next month is going to be intro, go ahead and jump in the swords, do the swords, do the tactical. And then, but you don't want to miss intro because if you're serious about understanding the entirety of the business, you need all of that information. But it won't hurt you to start with swords. It won't hurt you to start with creature movement. If you want to do those, jump in. And each class has three levels. And between each level, you have to take a certain number number of workouts because we expect your skill to go up. I don't want you to just show up and give me your money so you can do level two. That doesn't mean anything. I want to see you get good because I want to see you work. And if you're not doing the workouts, you're not doing practice. You're not doing the focus practice that you need to get good. And this is all about getting better. I grew up in the martial arts, so we had to work really hard for our belts. And if we weren't good enough, they wouldn't give us the next belt and we didn't get to learn the next thing. And we waited around another four months before we had another opportunity. Mind's Eye Tribe isn't that hardcore, but we do expect you to practice and we do expect you to get better because we expect you to be a professional and level up like a pro does. And that's a good point because... Maybe you don't want to be a, mo a, 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 a motion capture performance. Maybe you want to do theater, but you learn how to use the swords and how to do combat and fights or something that's going to help you anyway in any other, in commercials or in movies or anything else. That's absolutely you know, uh, the, One of the important things is, and I've noticed this, is, is performance capture, motion capture, Literally, we're in a big empty room imagining that there's a spaceship there and there's a dragon there and I have to run from the dragon and jump up on the spaceship. There is nothing in the room. So it's pure imagination. The people who work in performance capture regularly, they are incredible actors because their imagination is so rich and they can see all of this stuff and not get distracted. Once you start training with performance capture actors and, the, and you do this kind of training regularly, all of your your performance skills go through the roof. Uh, so because being on John Wick, you get to wear the cool suit. You get to hold the really cool gun. On a performance capture stage, you get to wear pajamas and hold a plastic Nerf rifle. So if you can make that look good, you're going to be spectacular. And that's what we really work on is making, no matter what you're holding, no matter what you're doing, you're going to look amazing. Unlike me, which is I'm focused, so I don't know what that's about. <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time, right? Okay, there's another question here. Any advice for people who have some acting experience in animation but looking for more 3D mock-up gigs, uh, gigs uh, where to apply? Well, we kind of covered this a little bit, but you can give any advice. I think you should just join, guys. Just join. Uh, the last question, have you have you worked on the new... Uh, Rococo mocap system advanced question. It is good in your opinion. Is this you, Justin? <laughs> I just read this. He didn't do the question. He did the comment on the question. Yeah, uh, we have worked with Rococo before. Um, I got to work in uh, Joshua Tree Desert doing something called the Haka. The Haka is kind of a hula for the people of Maori descent in New Zealand. It is their particular war dance. And so I put on, the, first let's talk about the different kinds of suits. The kind of motion capture that I talked about earlier, that is the standard motion capture. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to have that kind of system. What Rococo offers uh, is a suit that is a prosumer suit. You can own it for between $1,200 and $3,000, depending on what level you get. And you can go home and you can do your own motion capture and you can add it to your own independent film. Uh, it is a technology that somebody who wants to do their own films can afford. 
Um, that said, Rococo makes an incredible suit uh, that you just you zip it up. Uh, it has gyroscopes and and uh, magnets in it, and it beams that information to your laptop, and you can see your character moving in your laptop. That's what it does, and it's very affordable. Um, so it's a great system. It's a great suit. If you want to afford it and do your own motion capture, if you're doing a smaller video game and you don't have billions of dollars from a developer to, to do it, doing that is very, very acceptable, very, very possible, and very, very proactive. Same thing if you're doing a movie. If you want to put a creature in your movie and you want it to be animated, but you can't afford going to a motion capture studio, this is the best way to do it. And Rococo offers incredible uh, suits. They're really, really great. They're called inertial suits. Um, so check them out if you're interested in that. Definitely check it out. It's excellent. I've seen it up close. It works beautifully. Okay. Uh, another question that I think we already addressed it. Do you have private lessons? You do. And special classes just for Gon, Carla. And we're running out of, of time. Are these specific agents to have to get the perform capture? I think the voiceover, many of the voiceover agents do have a division for motion capture, right? Or who are the agents that? The voiceover but, and, and also theatrical agents will be mm -hmm. but different different agencies have uh, different divisions and many of them now are taking motion capture because it is such a big uh part of the industry it is and it's only growing and right. uh there's believe me i get to work with all of the people who can do this regularly it is a very small group there's only a very small group of people who have the skills to both act and do action acting uh, together. So uh, that's kind of what we teach is that skill set. And the people who get to do it get to work on both sides of the fence for performance capture. Okay, sorry, it's it's gone Kata, no Carla. I thought it was a Carla. And there's a Chihuahuas right there in the comment from, from Justin. Guys, we have to go, but it's been amazing. Before we go, I want you individually as an actor to tell me where can you be found? Your website, perhaps, like Andy, maybe your fan page, your social media, um, TJ, please as well. Where can these people follow you? Because you're so inspirational that I really want people to get to know you more and follow what you do. And also the website of uh, Mindsight Tribe. Andy, you wanna okay. start? Uh, sure, I'll start. Um, pretty much on every social media platform you can find me as Andy underscore Norris. Um, with an N, because I was N writing it with an M as a mother. It's an no, M as a no, no. Just like Chuck Norris. Um, I also have a website, andynorris.com. So it should Are be you related cool. to no. Chuck Norris? No. <laughs> I mean, since <laughs> But I do have a mean roundhouse kick, so. <sighs> Aha. <laughs> so Andy, Andy underscore Norris. Mm-hmm. On pretty much every every social media platform. That's how you'll find me. And and how about uh, Minds Eye Tribe? Minds Eye Tribe is Minds Eye Tribe on Instagram. It's also Minds Eye Tribe on, we're on TikTok now. And, uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, we're the Minds Eye Tribe on Facebook. And you can find us at MindsEyeTribe.com as well. The website. And how about you, TJ? Uh. Yeah, I, I am everywhere. I am everywhere. I, it is, it is, it's just TJ Storm on, uh, on Instagram. You'll find me at Storm's Eye, but it's there. It's Facebook. I'm pretty much everywhere. If you Google me, you will find me. Uh, and uh, we would love to uh, have you join us at the Mind's Eye Tribe. Definitely check us out at our website, mindseyetribe.com. That's mind S. I tribe minds I tribe.com and in, in definitely join us. Uh, the tribe is, is a great group of people. You'll have a community to train your skills with, and we love to hopefully help each other out. Uh, not only do we get to help people with their skills, sometimes they bring skills to us that we didn't know existed and, and we benefit from that. And there are amazing people with amazing uh, gifts and skills. We love that. And we, we love to share that. So uh, please come join the tribe and uh, we would love to meet you guys. And if you have questions, please go to our website and just email us and 
we'll answer whatever questions you have. Uh, and if you want to set up privates and all of that stuff, we can do that too. Thank you so much. And my name is Van Tapia. You can find me everywhere as vanhetapia.com or my social media, um, Twitter, Instagram. I just recently joined also TikTok. I'm still figuring out how to use it. <laughs> but it's, I will follow you guys. It's Van Tapia as well. And um, actors slash follow actors slash it's plural actors is two letter S make sure because it's plural because one actor cannot go far if we don't do it as a group as a whole with a bunch of people. So actors slash slash, you know, <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, both of you. I'm beyond, beyond thankful and grateful that you, we finally found the right date and the right time. And it's been so enriched. And Raptor slash Justin Regis, you can show up. I wanted to Justin, (laughs) Justin, my amazing husband and partner in crime who's been answering and copying all the questions. Andy, thank you so much to you too. And everyone who joined this conversation, share the love, really share it with your friends, tell others. Thank you. Thank you, Andy.